Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Nick. This week I'm building an end table for my son with some gorgeous ambrosia maple on the top. And I got a couple visitors in my shop, April Wilkerson and Jay Bates. Let's get going on this table. The project started with cutting the top to a rough dimension. The wood of choice was a curly ambrosia maple. On the miter saw, I cut it to rough length, getting all my pieces and making sure that my grain patterns lined up kind of how I'd want them in glue up. The board didn't have a straight edge, so Jay and April taped on a four foot level that was actually a little bit longer than the piece to ride against the fence. This was gonna ensure that there was no binding when we went to rip it to width. Once one edge was nice and straight, we could remove the level, flip it around, and cut it to final width. The material we were using wasn't down to its final thickness, so Jay and I headed over to the thickness planer and planed it down to its final thickness. Who needs a dust collector when you got friends in the shop willing to lend a hand? Jay got out my table saw sled, and then April could cut the board in half, so we ended up with two pieces of equal length. Then all she needed to do was apply some glue to the edges, get out some clamps, and tighten everything nice and tight. Making sure to align all of our marks. Then all we had to do was wait for the glue to dry. A couple quick passes with a card scraper to make sure that glue line was nice and flush and this is what we had. For the front piece, I was starting out with one wider board. Then I could rip two pieces off of each edge. Then in that center section, cut the ends off, discard the center piece, put everything back together with some glue and clamps, and we had our drawer opening. If you were gonna do an inset drawer, you could leave the center piece for your drawer and you'd have nice grain continuity. Or in our case, we were gonna do an overlay drawer, so the center section we no longer needed. Here you can see Jay on the table saw sled cutting the ends off of that center piece. Then it was just back to some clamps, add some glue, make sure all the ends line up nice and flush and tighten everything up. I took my leg stock over to the table saw and cut the eight foot piece in half and then cut those two halves into quarters. I then proceeded to square up one end of each of the legs, making sure that they were flush on one end, I added a clamp and cut them all at the same time, ensuring they were all going to be the same length. Then I could begin marking out the location for the mortises. When doing mortises, I like to double check and make sure that I have all my mortises in the proper location. So I did so and just kind of stood the legs up to make sure that they were all in the right spot. Then I could proceed to the hollow chisel mortiser to make some mortises. If you don't have a hollow chisel mortiser or you want some different methods on how to make mortise and tenon joinery, definitely check out April's video. I'll have a link in the description below, as well as a video from Jay where he uses a router to make the mortises. Having a couple helpers in the shop definitely made quick work of making these mortises. Somebody could be on the mortising machine while somebody else was cleaning them up with a chisel. Once those were all done, I could take my apron pieces to my tenoning jig and make all my shoulder and cheek cuts. If you want more information on this particular tenoning jig, check the description below for that video as well. A chisel makes quick work of finishing up the tenons. Then with a tapering jig on the table saw, I cut a slight taper on the inside surfaces of each of the legs. 
At this point, I forgot to put a kerf cut on the top of the apron pieces to attach the top, but more on that later. Then some glue on both the mortises and the tenons, and we could start gluing up the table base. Again, having some added hands in the shop is definitely a plus. We mocked up the tabletop off camera and it just looked a little bit thick or bulky. So I brought it to the table saw and put a chamfer on the bottom side of the tabletop. Being this was figured wood, I wanted to use a water-based dye to enhance the figure of the wood. So using a foam brush, I applied it to the surface liberally and then wiped off any excess. If you guys are interested in this dye, I'll have more information in the build article and you can find a link for the build article down in the description below. The dye's not much to look at until you get a clear coat on it. So after about four or five coats of satin lacquer, this is what we were left with. The next morning, Jay and April got started on painting the base with a flat black water-based paint. For the drawer hardware, I was just gonna use some wood slides, so I attached some runners to the inside with a couple brad nails and some glue. I then made a simple drawer off camera. If you guys are interested on my drawer construction methods, I'll have a link in the description below as well for how to make drawers. Then using a straight bit in my router table, I made corresponding grooves to match the slides in the table base itself. I did this in two passes. I also applied a little bit of paste wax to the drawer runners. After the front of my drawer was pre-drilled, I used some double-sided tape to attach the false drawer front and secured it with screws. Here you can see where I forgot to put grooves in the table apron, so I came back with a biscuit joiner and added some slots for the tabletop hardware. I put down some terry cloth towels on my workbench to protect the top's finish and then I could attach the top to the base using some tabletop attachment hardware. Again, I'll have all the links in the build article for everything that I used in this project. Well, there you go, there's the final project all complete. I absolutely love it. My son has yet to see it. He kind of saw it in progress, but he's yet to see the finished piece. I think it's super elegant. The top is amazing with that curly ambrosia maple and the dye. I don't know, it's just an awesome project all around. Did the mortise and tenon joinery because that's kind of my go-to joinery. If you guys are interested in seeing different methods on how to do mortise and tenon, April did a video on her channel in my shop as well. And if for whatever reason, if you guys aren't familiar with either April's channel or Jay's, I will put a link in the description below for their stuff. And uh, that pretty much wraps it up. So until I see you guys next time, you guys, take care. Did I do the wave right? Well, there's the final piece so, all set. Sorry, I that's right. flopped my arm sleeve. <clears throat> we can all flop to make you look not unusual. Well, my sleeve was up and I was like, <laughs> so it's mine. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, real quick. <laughs> I think this is enough. He's the one that cracked last time, too. <laughs> I already got to redo it. Why? I thought I had two when I went like this, and then I went, I went to bite my thumb. I'm like, there's not a cheese in there. There's not a cheese in there.